Right now on Sunrise, the race for the White House really heats up in Minnesota. I'll tell you where Dr. Jill Biden and Donald Trump Jr. will be in our state today. COVID case numbers out of Sturgis coming under question. Why a new study says hundreds of thousands of cases are linked to the motorcycle rally and how South Dakota's governor is responding. We're still on that cooling trend and we have frost in the forecast, but warmer temperatures by the weekend. Oscars shakeup. The Academy of Motion Pictures announcing major changes to be more inclusive. Helping women reclaim their worth. They engage in kind of an unlearning process. How health coach Jocelyn Lovick pushes women past societal standards that are setting them back. It's Wednesday, September 9th. Care 11 Sunrise starts now. So long, partner. This is hmm. Liam heading off on his first day of kindergarten yesterday. The first day back to school this year was filled with emotions. He had to leave all his friends behind there, you see, for many families. But it was also full of new experiences with some people saying they had trouble learning from home. Well, how did your child's first day of school go? Let us know by texting 763-797-7215 and we'll share some of those answers throughout the show. Yeah, very creative. Alicia's going to share some of those coming up later on. But first, we've got to check in with Tracy. Tracy, I've got to say, I'm glad you're outside and not me. I know. It's been so chilly. Definitely feeling like fall, actually feeling like end of October. So a chilly start to the school year. 47 degrees out this morning. Notice northern Minnesota down in the 20s. They had a hard freeze overnight, so several hours with those temperatures that cool. So ending the growing season for them. Now for us today, it's going to continue to be cool and gloomy. We're going to be battling the clouds and some on and off rain showers before a slow warming trend into the weekend. However, I'm breaking down more chances for rain by Friday. And a live look in the South Metro. If you're waking up in Egan, good morning to you. It's pretty quiet down there, uh, 35E right now at Pilot Knob Row. We just get, get a report of a crash, though, in the North Metro along 694 westbound out of Fridley. I'll try to pull that on a traffic camera and have an update in just a few minutes. The battle for the White House heats up in Minnesota today with Dr. Jill Biden and Donald Trump Jr. making stops. And Ellery McArdle is live in Prior Lake this morning. And Ellery, that is one of the stops today. Yeah, absolutely, Gia. So Dr. Jill Biden will be here at Jeffers Pond Elementary at about 11 o'clock this morning as part of a back to school event. Here she's going to meet with educators and Governor Tim Walls, also Senator Amy Klobuchar. Then later today she's going to meet with Congressman Dean Phillips in Minnetonka to tour an early education center to see how it's adjusted to the pandemic. You know, this visit is part of her national back to school tour, meeting with families and educators. These are more private events, but on the Republican side, Donald Trump Jr. is hoping for a big crowd in Duluth. He's holding a Make America Great Again event at the convention center. Doors open at 4 o'clock for general admission. Meanwhile, President Trump and Joe Biden will be in Michigan. Biden will be there today. Trump will be there tomorrow. You know, they're really focusing on that battleground state because just four years ago, Trump won that state with just over 10,000 votes. Yeah, it's going to be a busy next couple of weeks as we get to uh, Election Day. Ellery, thank you for that. Well, happening later today, it's expected that President Trump will announce that he's withdrawing more troops from Iraq. More than 5,000 troops are in Iraq now. This would be part of President Trump's campaign promise to get the country out of the, quote, endless wars. Breaking overnight, wildfires exploding in size out on the West Coast. Take a look at what people there are waking up to. Right now, more than 80 fires are burning. Thousands of people in California, Oregon and Washington have been forced from their homes. More than 2 million acres of land have been scorched this year alone, and the wildfire season is just beginning. Let's get you caught up on the three things you need to know to in the fight against the coronavirus. The Minnesota Department of Health reporting 387 new cases in the last day. Now, if we take a look at a chart, uh, it sh looks like a pretty stark drop from the last few days. Uh, this chart right here, health experts say both the case numbers and testing were very low, likely because of the holiday weekend. Still no word on a new emergency order from Governor Walls. Over the weekend, the governor told us an announcement was coming early this week. He says the order allows for greater and quicker response to the pandemic. The current order expires on Friday. And a state house committee is holding a hearing today on how COVID-19 disproportionately affects communities of color. The CDC says some people of color are at an increased risk for COVID-19 due to unequal opportunities in healthcare access and other housing and education gaps. That discussion starts at 10 a.m. 
Well, it's been about a month since the Sturgis motorcycle rally kicked off in South Dakota, but a new study has this big event back in the headlines and trending online this morning. In our digital dive, we're explain why it's this uh, study is calling the event a super spreader of COVID-19. Now the study, which was done by the IZA Institute of Labor Economics, claims that Sturgis may have caused more than 250,000 new coronavirus cases. It looks at public health costs of super spreading events and estimates cases connected to Sturgis could cost more than $12 billion. So here's something important to note though. According to NBC News, the nonprofit company's findings have not been corroborated by epidemiologists Technologists or public health officials. More than 400,000 people attended the 10 day events where there was minimal social distancing and mask wearing. In South Dakota, 124 people who attended Sturgis tested positive for COVID. A Minnesota biker was the first person to die of COVID-19 after contracting the virus at Sturgis with another 50 Minnesotans testing positive after being infected there. South Dakota Governor Kristen Noem is pushing back hard against the study, calling it fiction and in an attack on people's personal freedom. Sturgis was trending on Twitter overnight with thousands of people talking about this story online. Now, Gia, a lot of those comments were saying that uh, Sturgis rally was very irresponsible for them to go forward with it, while others are pointing out that the numbers haven't been confirmed yet by health officials. Yeah, so there you have it. We should also point out the folks there going uh, said, hey, I'm going to risk it. it. It's, you know, my right. And so there's that. But as, as we know, Alicia, a lot of people calling this a super spreader. Thanks, Chris. Now here's a look at today's other top stories in your morning rush. We're hearing from the daughter of a Bloomington murder victim. Renee Message says while she can't go into details, her feelings are complicated. Her father, Jason Message, is accused of killing her mother, Angela, and shooting two other people. She says she's now lost both parents to an extent to mental health issues. I know it's not something you would have done had he been in the right mind, so I can't like fully blame him. What I want is my dad to get mental health help because he's struggling too. Renee says her family is also thinking about the other family involved in this tragic situation. The 12 year old Michaela Salter Outlaw was shot in the head. Police are seeing more catalytic converter thefts in Bloomington. Toyota Priuses and SUVs seem to be the main targets. The converters have expensive metals in them that can be easily scrapped for profit. In Minneapolis, police are looking for a Jeep that was stolen from an impound lot. Investigators tell us someone smashed through the gates with a car yesterday and took the SUV, which was impounded by MPD, then both vehicles sped from the scene. And a tough loss for the Lynx. The game came down to the wire against Washington. The Mystics end up hitting a couple of free throws at the end of the game for an 89-86 win. Next up for the Lynx, Las Vegas. The playoffs start next week. And that's your Wednesday Morning Rush. Tracy, what's our one thing weather today? Well, you're going to want the jacket again and the umbrella. Temperatures staying in the 50s and we'll be battling on and off showers through the evening. And a fender bender, unfortunately, if you're waking up in Fridley along 694 westbound right now, it's blocking the right shoulder. Looks like it's involving a few vehicles, not causing any slowdowns, but I'll have an update coming up. A 2020 presidential election is only a few months away and there are a lot of voting concerns with COVID-19. Election officials are working hard to keep you safe so you can still cast your ballot. Blaine Alexander is here to talk about the new push to recruit a younger generation. Good morning. Well, Chris, good morning to you. That's absolutely right. So, of course, because of the pandemic, it really is leaving a lot of states looking ahead to this possible dangerous shortage when it comes to the November election. As you know, so many poll workers tend to be over the age of 60, and that's the group that's most at risk with COVID-19. So here in Georgia, I spoke with a young man who just graduated from Georgia State. He was actually working as a poll worker on June 9th, the state's uh, primary that did not go smoothly. And he said one thing that he saw immediately was that there needed to be more young people working the polls. He said he was by far the youngest at his polling location, so he did what most young people do. He started an account on Instagram and started recruiting his friends, his fellow college students. So far, he's got about 700 people recruited and he's got he's aiming to get many more by election day. But the whole point of this is that, you know, of course, when many people go to the polls, despite the fact that we're going to see record numbers of mail in ballots, absentee ballots, there's still going to be a tremendous turnout when it comes to November. So, of course, 
course, you've got to have those people who are there to check your ID, to work the machines, to hand you the little sticker when you get ready to leave. Uh, and so that's why many states are taking these creative ways to try and find poll workers leading up to November, Chris. Yeah, we'll have to see if it all works and if those younger voters do get out and cast a ballot. Thanks, Blaine. Well, learning from home might be a new experience for some families, but teachers have got you covered. Their tips to set your child up for success the whole year. The best picture category for the Academy Awards is going to look a lot different. The four new criteria films now have to meet before they can even get in the running for the Oscar. And breaking barriers in your own mind. How holistic wellness coach Jocelyn Lovick is helping women overcome societal standards.